What's up, Maxis? How you doing? Good, man. What Been are you up chilling. to, oh, arrogant one? You know what? Now that you said, I actually have to show you. Ooh. I have finally almost finished my car. Oh, wow. Look at okay. this. Yeah, so you went with the links, hey? Oh, no, this is the uh, arms. Oh, okay. I couldn't see that. Hard, um, to, um, hard to see. Nice. Upper arms you know how... Up. You know how far I've gotten in my car? Yeah, the shocks, I bet. The shocks are still where JQ left them the other day. Speaking of JQ, yeah. he's he's finally back in America and out of my hair. But I'll be seeing him here soon. I don't know if that's good or a bad thing, but uh, I'll be seeing JQ here soon. He's back in America. He's super excited. But, uh, you know, um, we got a lot of questions to that we got asked this week that we have to answer. And uh, we have uh, a guest that come on to talk really quick about uh, a big one-word race that's happening next week. So I say, hey, let's drop that intro and get on with this stuff. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book races. Hard not to be said. arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Leslie the Great, with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our scene. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Hundred bucks right here, hundred dollar throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, indeed, Nitro is the glory, but E Buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number one sixty-five of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host. Keenan White, a.k.a. Lefty the Great. And over there, get used to him, because he's going to be on her a lot, is the arrogant one, the homeless one, <laughs> arrogant homeless Max. What's up, Max? How are you doing? I'm doing very well. After five tries of you making that sort of uh, first first intro to the podcast, I think I, I think you got it down now. 165 episodes. and <laughs> Yeah. I made a mistake last week, too, and I left it in the podcast, I think. And then um, this week, it re literally took us four times to get this right. So I don't know. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. But uh, this is our <laughs> Friday uh, episode of the week. Uh, we're, the, we, you know, we're pushing out these two episodes per week. Usually Monday is news and race recaps if there is something going on exciting to talk about. And uh, then Fridays will be generally an interview uh, and questions, which are very popular this week because Max has a lot of questions. So um yeah, let's um, let let me get on and, and give my thanks to everybody and uh, and everything, and then uh, we can get into the questions. So first off, I want to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We guys can't do it without you guys. Thank you for all the support. We really hope you're liking this new format. If you are, uh, we see people are watching us more on YouTube more. So please hit that like, share, notification button, leave a comment. If you're listening to us on a pod a pod app. Please leave a, uh, a a comment, a review. That all helps us, and uh, share our shows, our socials, man. That helps us out a lot. So, yeah, if you guys can keep doing that and helping us out, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, the YouTube channel, not much work going into it, but it's it's steadily climbing up, and I like that. So let's try to get that to two thousand uh, followers here soon. Uh, we, that that channel will be important for DNC because all the DNC content content will be there shout out to the patrons uh they got some early they got early release and uh we've got we've been having some discussions there on the on the patron side of things in the patreon.com uh they'll get also get early release of my blog that i'm releasing this week uh the blog is called 
entries, the uh, entry counts, the fake news of RC racing. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sure that's going to piss off some people. Uh, Max, you haven't even seen that one yet. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Thank you to the patrons of the podcast. If you wish to be a patron, you can. The links for all of that is in the written description, and I'm greatly thankful for what they do. Shout out to the awesome companies that support the podcast. Invisible Speed, it's starting to get very popular. People are using it. They're learning it. It's a great uh, tool, the online course, and, of course, the book. So shout out to them. TNR Fuels had a great race here this past weekend. We talked about that on the last podcast. High Tech RC. Beach RC, Techno RC, Mayako, Lugs, Clinic RC, Racecraft USA, G Spec RC Tuning, JTP, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic. Uh, yeah, check all those guys out. Uh, Don- David Ronafalk, RC Kevin, RCGP, House of RC, RCGP so- sign up, so- uh, kind of sold out. We'll talk about that real quick. But yeah, all these awesome companies, we have uh, we have some affiliate links for them. Uh, I know for the Beach RC, we have an affiliate link, and they are the sponsor of the Bench Racing Q&A this week. So if you guys can get in there, uh, use that affiliate link. It helps us out. We got a little slice of that. We appreciate that. But generally, just showing any of these customers some love. Uh, these, these sponsors some love, shows the podcast some love. So uh, go check them out. Tell them where you heard us from. G-Spec has a new uh, coupon code as well. We got G-Spec, Race, Craft, Lugs. Uh, Papa Willys all have coupon codes that you can use and save some money. So help us out there, people. And thank you to those uh, companies for supporting the podcast. So, Max, uh, real quick, I just wanted to touch on a few things before we go on. Uh, This hat. So I found this in my closet today. Uh, I have two of them, actually. So I was watching um, my good buddy, Charlie. Mac and DeMarco and Craig Titus and Mark Santa Maria, they all did like their Dirty South podcast a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. And um, so they were talking about the Southern Nationals race. Now, I got this hat from the original Southern Nationals, not what while race time has it. So I was, I think I got there like the year, they had one more year of the regular Southern Nationals and the race time took it over. So I got this hat from that Nationals. That's actually the, the one that Joseph and I went. And Tony Scarcella and like the Stubbs and and I think Jonathan Bunting was there. And we, this is the one that JQ nearly burnt down the pits with a lipo fire. And uh, this was such a memorable race. Uh, the the layout, a guy does a layout for that. He does it every year. It's so great. And it's fun. It's, uh, the, so the person that gave me this was uh, Caleb Hamby. And um, he recently passed away in a car accident just before Christmas. And they're actually going to have... Uh, so they're going to have, it's called the one and done race. So this race, they're going to have another race at exactly where they have the Southern Nats in the Ike Hamilton, uh, expo center. They're on their West Monroe and the guy's coming in to build the track again. He's, this is his last track he's ever going to build like this, like original, uh, Southern nationals type style track and people are going to come in a race and all proceeds go to Caleb and his family, which is really cool. Uh, and just to think that Caleb was the one who gave me this hat. Uh, and I'll never forget is that when we was going to this race, uh, I reached out to him and I was like, Hey, uh, yeah, Joseph and I are coming to this race. We just want to know what pitting is. And he's like, Hey man, I, I want to call you. And, um, so he called me and it's like, I just wanted to make sure, you know, we, we, he, they were basically, he was basically nervous about JQ coming. He had heard, you know, like this is, this is like 2018 JQ had like, had turned that guy's radio off, had turned Bill Sterling's radio off and all that stuff. You know, J, JQ was in a big war like i think it's in the lupus live war as well like the great lupus live war of 2018 uh you know jq was just pissing off everybody at that time and uh we ended up talking and i was like look man uh we're gonna be J-, you know of course the stickers so jq had done the stickers as well in 2018 so he's like i don't want any any of that at southern nationals I was like, don't worry i don't want any of it at southern, southern nationals either so we we met him they were very nice to us man they treated us good they gave us some great pit spots and um he said he came over and dropped this and a bunch of hats and all that stuff over for us and uh that was it was great you know it was a great experience i loved that race it was probably one of the best races that i've attended uh the fit, the layout is awesome you know and they hit it and <clears throat> race time has it now they've moved it <clears throat> and it's still a good race and they still stick to the, the caps some of the rules while they did it last year but uh you know it just still doesn't have that southern old southern nats flavor 
because that yeah, guy was, was very t- that guy's races like his tracks were really unique. oh yeah like the elevation there was always they were always a bit low me a bit bumpy it, like every time i saw any anything about that race i was like okay this looks pretty cool uh and it was very different compared to any of the east coast race it was very different and that that's what made it cool cool as well nowadays uh, after race time took it it's i mean same stuff more more or less than the other races it's still a good event for sure i i bet but yeah that it doesn't have that old feel which i think made that race specifically very right cool. right so that's really cool and i just found this hat and i was like i'm gonna wear this today and i remember that so i would talk about it all right max so um a, a quick few things that we want to uh touch on before we get into the questions uh i'm gonna save this for monday but uh the new one army chassis extension piece from for the hb car i like this uh this is small little innovation you know what i mean but it's kind of where things start and probably as innovative as we can be cost wise and rc right now so um i'll, I'll see this in fr- in person at dnc i did reach out to one army the bartlett family uh maybe maybe you know maybe i'll get them on her to talk about it what do you think about it my sort of initial thought is it's it's a cool idea i think this is the first time when you can actually just tune the uh the wheelbase on its own uh, like this because regularly just you you would have to change the whole chassis and putting the hub back is a completely different thing uh tuning the hub hub position it, it changes so much more and i think this is a way to isolate the change I, I i do have concerns of how durable it is how, how is when the chassis wears uh, how does it like does it work as well like the the pieces that you switch but mm-hmm. apart from that it's definitely a really really cool idea well maybe you should reach out to the bartlett family uh he just he had messaged me earlier i haven't gotten around to reading it um and then they can explain a little better but i know this one army stuff's pretty good i saw it at dnc in 2020 when i was there and i knew some of the yeah, people they, that were involved i think they machined it all themselves uh, that yeah i saw some photos on their facebook and so that's definitely promises good that the quality of it would be good okay. uh, and i think i think if if there is no sort of durability issues with it i think it's a very nice idea for sure yes 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 i like it. i like to see stuff like this uh we also so yeah i'll find out some more information maybe we'll get a product spotlight on this next week get them on we could talk about it um or uh, and, and they can elaborate a little bit more because i like cool things like this uh we, we we found out unfortunately there will be no montpellier gp live coverage uh from the normal rc mag which is, is is unfortunate they will have video up but no streaming um so that kind of puts a, a monkey sorry a monkey in the wrench i was to say a monkey wrench in the spokes of our plans that was coverage of montpellier um so i guess we'll just watch this race and recap it unless maybe chris at circus rc decides to do some yeah. streaming so yeah i contacted chris but he hasn't answered yet uh i hope we get some sort of streaming i think we can still sort of recap it we'll, we'll do our coverage i think it doesn't really change it mm-hmm. uh that much but uh for sure for the for the people watching at home that definitely a bit of a bummer for, for me as well i always watch the main well yeah maybe we should here, um so. maybe we should still do like an introduction video find out some history about this race talk about that and um oh oh sure yeah and then introduce people to it uh yeah nothing else otherwise than that uh busy trying to get some swag for dnc so uh it looks like i'll have some t-shirts some decals and hats for sale at dnc which is great and then hopefully we'll have them in a shop afterwards so people can buy them i have people have been asking for swag for a long time so uh i'm excited about that i just finished up the details with that looking forward to dnc the vikings headed to dnc uh we'll have him on next week to talk about uh his going back to america and uh this week's guest is another friend of the show we had uh the doctor alexander hagberg on uh i i just realized that the snowbirds were happening are happening next week and i was like hey he's won this race so many times and i was like dude uh we should have you want to talk about the snowbirds and he's like, I'm at actually in St. Louis practicing now. So he's been also been traveling quite a lot uh, since COVID, since COVID uh, regulations eased up. So we talk about that. 
We touch on uh, the worlds coming up. And also he tells me what he thinks about Runner Falk uh, and his abilities in, in Onward. So uh, thank you to the doctor, Alex Hagberg, uh, for his time. Quick, nice, short 31 minute interview. All right, Max. So, I mean, the point of this is we're going to do the Beach RC bench racing QA. We want to say thank you to Beach RC for their continued support of the podcast. Thank you to, Br- to Brent and Lucas. I hope Lucas is going to be start doing his vlogs again. And um, I look forward to seeing Brent at DNC. Remember, everybody, there's an affiliate link in the written description of this podcast. Uh, if you can use that, it helps us out. We got a little slice and helps us out a lot. So with that said, let's get on to the Beach RC Bench Racing Q&A. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. Yeah, thank you to BeachRC for the continued support of the podcast. Uh, remember, everybody, the, use the affiliate link in the written description, and we got a little slice of that. Helps us out. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, Brent puts a lot of money back into RC, so go check them out. All right, Max. So we have quite a, f- a bunch of questions. We are going to try to answer these as quick as possible, so we ain't her- answer questions for an hour and a half. But you are getting popular, oh, arrogant one. And people want to get your... I know you love these questions because you geek out on them in the Discord as well. <laughs> So our first question comes from somebody, uh, Adrian, who actually posted it last week and I missed it. And he goes, a question that often comes up in the Nitro pits is to buy a new kit or keep rebuilding, rebuilding the one you have. And at what point is it time to sell the one that you have and get a new one? Personally, I like refreshing a kit with new parts. Also to keep a practice car on a race car or not. So um, you go through quite a lot of cars, Max. You know, actually, when I was running JQ, I used to do, like, I would have a practice car, then a race car, mm-hmm. and then, like, I would have a Euros car. So I would have, like, a, like I would always build a new car for Euros, and then sort of, I would then sort of slowly switch it so that the Euros car would turn into my sort of race car after the Euros. And mm-hmm. then my old race car would turn into the, practice car and then the practice car i would just maybe use for testing take the clips of it or whatever uh but now when i was running associated uh i actually just run one car i just kept switching parts all the time uh i think just having one car is much easier for sure because when you try stuff like for example when you have two cars uh what then what often ends up happening is you try stuff in testing and then you have a setup tuned out for your practice car then you have to do all those switches to your race car uh and uh like then you like sort of have to keep sort of in balance that both are similar Mm -hmm. uh, which is oftentimes a bit more work but to be honest if you pay for stuff it's often much much uh uh cheaper to have two cars and that's just because buying kits is so much cheaper than buying mm-hmm. parts like i obviously don't don't pay for any of my, my stuff so for me it was not an issue mm-hmm. uh but looking at sort of what i ordered and how much parts i went through and just looking at the retail prices because like i can when i make my order I always to see what the price would be um yeah i mean probably spent like five kits worth of spares in just well, like a few years yeah so like or in money like and in spares it's not that much so i think i for sure if you want to go the cheapest way have two cars and you keep one car like very good and then the other car you just sort of switch parts that are too worn out so and all, what i have to, often did is the race car i run a few races with like with like arms and drivetrain and then i would switch it over to the practice car so 
if you if you want to save money definitely have two cars uh because you can run the race car for like two seasons pretty easily mm -hmm. uh just change the chassis at some point and like that uh but if you want to have the sort of field stay very similar the whole time just have one car and keep replacing parts but make sure that you actually replace parts because if you like stuff like center diff mounts brake cams uh even gearboxes stuff like that wears out so you actually have to change stuff a lot yeah i would say if if you're racing a lot as well mm -hmm. you you may be looking at getting two cars all year anyway one at the beginning of the season one mate one midway during the season and mm -hmm. that you know because some people do race year round and just depends like you know uh and I think that's how it just worked with me. I, I cause I never sell stuff either. You know what I mean? So yeah. I get it that people sell things in, in, in America and sell sliders, but I don't. So yeah, I, I, and yeah, I always, I, when I raced that, when I raced, like when I was into it, I had a practice car as well, you know, cause I just didn't want to put wear and turn on my race car. Yeah. So it's, it's a hard question because I'm not completely sure what I do myself. Like, like with AE, I had like at the end, I had like I kept the same sort of chassis and electronics, and uh, I had like four or five clips. Okay. I was just switching around clips, and some clips yeah. I used only for practice, some clips I used for racing and practice. And then, like, I just like, yeah, I was like also like center diffs. I had like three different ones, I had like six sets of shocks and stuff like that. So I had mm. like a lot of stuff. And I could just switch them around so nothing really would wear at any point. And then gotcha. if I saw some parts wear, I would just switch it around. So, yeah, uh, you actually have to spend more money to run just one car if you want to keep it at the level you really would yeah. need a race car to be. Yeah. All right. Uh, good question. Next question comes from Jay. Jason Smith. He wants to know, curious on Max's or JQ's thoughts on stick versus wheel controllers? many top euro and asian drivers use them and in the usa we don't but millions of kids use a stick every day to play video games seems like an easier transition than learning touch and feel with a wheel excuse me plus i've watched videos where masami mentions using a stick spreads the weight more on both hands and leads to less issues in a 45 minute main or an entire career racing so what's your thoughts on this have you ever raced with sticks I have tried, like I haven't raced with sticks, but I have tried people's cars with stick radios. And um, to be honest, the throttle control is pretty great. Uh, I think sort of uh, the steering is, in my opinion, better with the wheel, uh, especially the bigger the wheel you have. Because with the sticks, it's hard to sort of find the middle ground. You just turn or you don't turn. It's It's hard to sort of, find the ground but with with the throttle it's much easier to control uh with your thumb than with your like just one finger uh like it's on 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 a regular radio uh so i think with sticks if you drive a car that has very little rear grip or is just it has a lot of power you might be better off running sticks uh but if you like to drive very round and if anyone has an any clue about how Lee Martin drives, just like uh, very round lines, very geometric lines, then I think you will almost always be better off with a wheel radio. Um, what Masami said about the weight, I think, I think that time has passed. Like the new radios weigh probably not even a, a kilogram, or something crazy little mm -hmm. these days. So probably not an issue. I, I mean, for me, it hasn't been an issue for. A long while i don't i can't remember a time when i was i had my hand saw after a main so that's definitely not an issue um i think personally i would definitely sort of i mean if if i was running wheel i would keep running wheel if i was running stick i would keep running stick uh but yeah the only person yeah. in america that runs stick that i know of is a uh, little bump yeah and i think that's because his hands were too small to run wheel yeah. right I mean, I don't know. I think it's just natural. I mean, when I, my first ever RC car, which was like some Radio Shack car had stick, you know, so it was easy enough yeah. to figure that out. 
But to do it now, I don't know. I actually was thinking maybe I could use a stick radio because it'd be easier for me to use, but my thumb just kind of doesn't move fast enough for that. So I kind of, but we can always ask JB about his experience with a stick radio. <laughs> he was only 28 seconds slower off his first lap, <laughs> off, off everybody's fast lap. Well, and he said he well I, I mean, I don't think JB was. Uh, I know, I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> I, think it's just a, I think it's just a matter of, of what you get used to and, yeah, what, and, you're, and what up or on. You know what like I mean? Like, I'll give a few examples. Uh, Elliot Boots started with a wheel radio, switched to stick radio. Like, I, I think you said one and a half years. And then he switched to stick. And clearly, oh, really? he's okay. very fine with sticks. And I've seen him drive with a wheel radio. Doesn't look very different from him driving a stick radio. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think and, when you're uh, talented, you're talented. Yeah, but also another guy uh, who did it the other way around, uh, Gilles Groskamp, uh, started out with a stick radio, I believe, switched to a wheel radio and won the Worlds in the same year he switched So, in touring. So right. it's what you prefer. Uh, probably cheaper to go with a wheel radio because more available. I would agree. All right. So we have a question from Jared Malveda. He wants to know, how do you go about determining your base setup? Is there a way to get a setup that will be decent most of the time and will require only small changes to be dialed in? Oh, for sure. For every single car, there, there is a setup that is a base setup. Well, okay. There might, you might find a car which is so extreme, uh, like maybe TLR, uh, could be an example of like the the short rear arm, the very sort of aggressive front end. That car could be sort of that you just can't find a setup that works uh, like regularly. Uh, but for most other cars, there is a sort of baseline and then you sort of move from there. Uh, and the thing you sort of know you have to do is if you go very extreme, you almost always know that on some tracks that is not going to work. Mm -hmm. So like anti-squat, like if you have five degrees anti-squat or uh, five degrees of toe or something like this, there is going to be a time when that doesn't work. Uh, like for example, Ongara runs a very sort of, uh, very sort of aggressive setup. The car is very imbalanced in, in balance when, uh, so so the car is balanced when he's running in Europe where the grip is stable. Maybe it can be bumpy as well, but it's high speed. You don't have to do like slow speed accelerations. But when he goes to America, he clearly has a lot more issues because the slower speed, you can't keep the pace up. You actually have to accelerate. So, and for example, like Ronafog, he drive like with HP, he drives, the car itself is more balanced and the setup he runs is a lot more balanced where rear and front grip are a sort of similar level. So that's sort of one example where Ungaro runs a setup that's balanced in his area, but like not balanced as in how the car works itself, but he can make it work oftentimes. So that works for him. Uh, but generally, you know, you have found the sort of right direction in the setup when you start trying stuff and it actually gets worse. Uh, because oftentimes if it's so that you try stuff and nothing really happens or it's like maybe better, maybe worse, oftentimes you, then you know that the car is quite off. That's what I found at least. Mm -hmm. And when the car is like in the sweet spot, like you set up is dialed, like just like a small thing, like putting the shocks in one hole or going to a slightly thicker diff in front or center you can feel the difference and you can sort of see what the car is doing, like feel and see what the car is doing differently. That's for sure. One thing I felt and like, it's so, sometimes it's weird because I've had situations where, uh, with both a and JQ where I had sort of a track that was way off, sort of like way different than any, any other track I've had run. And you most likely should have had to run a different setup. But anytime I tried something else, I just couldn't get it to work. Like, and then when you go back to your baseline, it just works. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's just that the car reacts in a certain way to, th to things. And you know how the car reacts because you run that setup a lot. 
So it's not always it's not always that the car needs to match the track perfectly. It's also you need to be able to control the car because like something like F1 is is very different where the driver just has to adapt to the car. But in RC, it's so much drivers driver based still that you actually have to drive the car. And uh, I think I think that's that's one thing for sure. For example, I, I can give like a specific example in 2018 at the Euros. We started out with a setup that we've been testing for a few weeks for a high good track. Uh, and it was like the car worked all right, but I just couldn't sort of trust the car. Like the steering feel wasn't the way I wanted it to be. be. And anything I did just like it made, sometimes it made it better, sometimes it made it worse, but nothing could sort of get that feel back. And I actually struggled a lot. I, I don't know how, where I ended up, but I was like one of the lowest qualifying heats. And then in the, like the first qualifier i i i went to close to my regular setup and then the second one i was like okay i'll do everything the same way i do in finland uh i'll put tires that like run a focus running at the time so like everything is sort of like i know like this is what i know and i finished like seventh in that round like top 10 i finish or something like for that time for me that was a really good qualifying run so that's that's something that I then I sort of that that situation just clicked for me that sometimes you just need to be one with the car. And another good example is Philippines RCGP. Uh, Joseph had developed some like new shock towers. We had, um, I think we had some different hubs as well. Uh, there was Thursday practice, Friday Friday practice. Both days I struggled a lot. Like. I had very good pace on one lap, but just couldn't keep it together for more than a few laps. And then on Saturday, I was just like, okay, like this isn't just working. Everything same as I've been running because I had been testing in, in, in North Carolina with Mike Hill for a month or so before, before I went to the Philippines, I just went to exactly the same setup. I ran at uh, like SMB and easily and mm -hmm. similar setup to PMB as well. And uh, it was perfect. I like initially like I was really fast like straight away. Uh, I had some issues with tires as we all remember what happened to Rona Park that race. Uh, I had the same issues. We were both running J concepts. Uh, but then as soon as I got the tires to stay on the rims, uh, I won qualifier. I finished third, and I was actually battling for like with McBride like that. Like, come on, like that's something like from a horrible weekend to battling mm. with someone like at that level for me that's amazing and those two events just prove me that sometimes it's not about making the car perfect for the track more it's just that you need to be able to drive the car the way you want to drive and and i think cavalry has often said this too that the car is not perfect but i know the car and i know how to drive around it and that's yeah that makes, sense. That makes the, sense that's oftentimes the most important thing for for you Okay. That was a long answer, Max, by the way. That was, but I, I think that's the I was thing just going to say, I, you just run stock setup and be gone. That's your base setup. <laughs> but that's what Lefty would have said. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, no, I, but I, I, I think, your examples were great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that's why this I is something you. I think people don't really talk about, like pros. On, I, don't, I haven't heard a lot of pros talk about this. And mm -hmm. that's something that's clicked for me uh, a few times. And I'm like, because sometimes you forget. You get, like go too into being like, okay, I need to make like, this track is high grip, so I need to perfect this or do this sometimes you just need to be one with the car and that's enough yeah sweet all right uh good question next question from chris oxley i believe he's the owner of brookthorpe uh where the barbarian goes and races and he races that's a Run. isn't that the dirt track yeah it's like a clay oil track it used to be an astro track so he i think has that's one of the coolest tracks in uk if i if yeah. i'm thinking of the right one i believe it's brookthorpe thorpe I'm, i Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but I believe it is. Max, do you think we'll ever see a time where eight scale buggy runs to control tires nationally and internationally to reduce tire yes. costs? Yes, I think so. Finland, I think shipping Finland is going to be that, the issue. Finland does that already. Like anything, we are the leaders in the world. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> leaders of, of, this is what you're the leaders of. Drinking on your own, eating reindeer balls, and rally car drivers. We are we are by studies like being the happiest country in the world for like I don't, I don't know how you, long. So. You, your people does <laughs> do not exude like oh enough. Let's not forget about your 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 uh, fetish of 
using toy horses like that's a big sport like jumping around pretending yeah. that you're riding a horse that's crazy yeah i don't know where that came from that's yeah yeah I, but i mean i prefer like the old school weird stuff like carrying your wife that's a sport as well that's a huge festival for it really yeah it's like a long run and you carry your wife and that's like a thing like over your shoulder yeah like in, oh, okay. on your back like Does, they, did your like dad do that to your mom your... no 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 no. it's it's a thing like in i think it's in like the middle parts of finland or maybe the west west side of finland oh okay. but it's it's a bit weird but let's get back to the tires that's getting too odd for me <laughs> yeah so for sure i think it's just a matter of time i think they're sort of for sure the what's happening now in the uk like come on you guys are already running control tires you just don't have the rules like every <laughs> yeah. single guy is running seismic and the same chain thread same compound so what's taking you from just saying okay this is the control tire you don't need to buy anything else just buy this or next year just say okay now you buy a pro line or whatever because if you're all on the same tire you don't need to test tires or buy different stuff so i think brca could be a good force to try this out first because you guys actually have a ridiculous situation at the moment i'm gonna just say it out loud because it is like every single one of your guys even sponsored guys are running seismic and like people who have tire sponsors who had tire sponsors for years just say okay i don't want a tire sponsor anymore because i can like i just can't compete so yeah like you guys i think in the uk you you could like brca should take initiative because you already have a control tire just like like i said like <laughs> it's just not not in the rules and in finland we did this uh it, it has so far worked really well only thing i suggest for you guys is have two compounds have a compound for cold weather have compound for hot weather and then like each race choose a hot weather or cold weather compound because we have we have a few tracks in finland which are very rough uh and, like the the dirt is very abrasive uh so you really like you can just sque squeeze a main out of the tires we run uh but like on other tracks that tire lasts forever so if we had the one compound stiffer i think it would be perfect where two other races we had at those abrasive tracks you have run the stiffer compound and then all the other races you run the the softer compound i think that's uh that would be a good solution because at the end of the day you you just need need to buy tires for the race you don't need, mm -hmm. it doesn't really change the amount of tires you need to buy and because every race you just the amount of tires to, you need to buy too that's what they should do I think we have it. I don't know if we have it capped, but generally people use two sets always. Like I haven't heard of anyone using three sets. So it's like in the UK, probably someone would, uh, but at least the tires we run here, Finland, we have run the HP grid locks in, in pink. Uh, we should run yellow for the abrasive tracks. And that's, we, we tested a lot of tires. We tested AKA, uh, we tested uh, GRP, we tested, um, well, I, I tested my own J-Concepts tires just for the for comparison. We had some other brand. We had HP, we had GRP, we had AKA. Maybe that was it. But all of those tires were decent, but the HP pr proved to be sort of the most uh, durable. And that's why... And also make sure you don't pick a tire that's like hard to get because I've seen that happen in 10 Yeah, that'd be, that like, would suck. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure the supply is good. Make sure it's not crazy expensive and make sure it's, it's durable enough where people can run uh, with one set the race if they want to and with two sets if they make the main. Good stuff. I actually should get a... Uh... I'm going to get Martin from extra lap on her. He's like the BCRA 10 scale guy oh, now. Sorry, I I want to continue this a bit. Because, BRCA? BRCA, sorry. Uh, because I, I forgot to answer to the EFRA or World Sport out. This will be get quick, but EFRA can do this too. So what they would need to do is write in the rules, uh, a specific tire will be picked for each championship. Uh, for year B, year A, you would pick a tire for that specific championship. And then every time you pick a brand, they have a cooldown period where you can't pick the same brand every year. So mm -hmm. this way, 
there won't be a situation where one brand just offers Efra a lot of money and then they, they are just uh, chosen every year. So you always like you write in the rules that if you if you're a brand that's chosen for Euro A, you can't be picked in Euro A in like the next two years. So yeah, you yeah, have always that. two years of cooldown. And and if Mar could do the same, well, they would have two years. So you know. Yeah, but like, if, Mar, or if you get if, a, if you would, get an eight scale, yeah. you don't get the ten scale. You know. Yeah, something like that, or yeah. just like you have to always skip one year or whatever it will be. But like just write that in the rules, and uh, then just each each race or each event uh uh brand of tires is chosen and that's it uh in, simple and easy yeah it's the way though it's the way benjamin james do you think there is a potential market for companies outside of kyosha and tlr to offer rtr8 scales well there are a few companies that offer rtr s works offers a very good e-buggy serpent just released uh e-buggy and nitro buggy as well jq had a buggies for a while i don't think they rtr buggies but no anymore um I, I, here's the thing about this this market is that we always if it's going to be rtr it kind of has to be almost ready to race to a point like it this is the, the hard part it's gonna like you need to make this car as close as you can to the real thing as possible so if really all that person has to change is like servos engine maybe a few bits and pieces here that can be updated to aluminum you know what i mean a lot of times you get these rtr cars and they got plastic a and b blocks and or you know just pot you know just the, not the best metal and all that type of stuff and that's the issue and then they end up breaking and you can't get parts for them you know or if you oh i want to upgrade this to the next best car you're going to spend as much as you would buying a new car so i heard the s works e-buggy one e-buggy is really good maybe if these companies can base their rtrs more to their current model make it as better like a better quality maybe the price of the rtr has to go up a little bit as well um yeah i don't know maybe i mean everything's going up look at the mugen price we forgot to talk about that price of mugen 850 dollars maybe you'll save that for monday yeah we'll save that for monday yeah uh, uh, my take on this is that work i uh, worked uh, at a hobby shop for a while every single time someone comes in to buy an rtr it's it's a monster truck like for the rtr market i don't think it's worth it to produce like a an rtr race car instead of what i would suggest is having sort of build packages kind of like dirt bikes you go buy a kawasaki and you get everything like just the bike is ready to race uh, like i think that's something we could look into in rc as well where uh for sure brands like s-works could do this very easily they have uh their own i think they have a servo connection with some brand for sure they have tires for sure they have engines for sure they have uh almost everything i don't know if they have servos but they pretty much have everything ready so just have a car that has everything on it and uh because the combo it's probably going to be a bit cheaper you don't maybe have to put the high-end models on it but i think that could be a move forward for for trying to get people to like easier ex access to eight scale racing yeah but I think yeah, we need I, to have just a really good RT ready to race almost spec e buggy. Like that would probably be it. Yeah, but it has to be so that it's competitive. It it can't yeah. be like it's it's shitty because yeah, yeah, yeah. the people who just want an RC car they will buy a monster truck. Like yeah, ninety nine or, Arma out of or something times. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the Arma Arma Cadence are uh, like crazy crazy popular because they're big. They have a lot of power. But they are not like race cars, and that's people don't really want race cars. And I think I think Kyosho and TLR have those because that's what they've had for a long time. But I, I don't think as a marketing thing, it's it's I don't think it's it sells very well. Yeah, I, I could be wrong, but I mean I think they sell. I just don't think they're good for like you buy one and then either the person gets a like scraps it and gets a, a whole entire race outfit, or they scrap it all together because it's just too much of a pain in yeah I'm eyes. yeah the, the thing the thing I'm afraid of with that type of RTRs it's the quality is always worse than the actual cars so when you do that uh, what often ends up happening is the people think like the cars are really fragile and the engines don't run 
and then they just quit on racing cars altogether. But, but that's just that's just because it's a shitty RTR. Uh, and there have been good RTRs for sure, but a lot of times the race RTRs have been just like trying to save on the price and they put like worse engines on it or something like that. And that I think it's sometimes those those sort of those sort of products can turn people off of racing. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, Joey Montiel, what's up, Joey? How's Gabriel doing? Uh, came to RCGP in USA. He wants to know what is the control tire for RC2 at the first round? Uh, I, they have not released it yet, but I heard it's a new tire company that's doing it. Yeah, I think, yeah, you don't know. I don't know how they released any specifics, but yeah, it won't be an existing tire company. It will be specifically designed for RC2, I believe. Oh, okay. Really cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, Evan Osborne, when front toe out is one degree on set, on a setup sheet, does it mean one degree total or one degree per wheel? It's one degree per wheel. Yeah. yeah. Miles Lane, I have one for Max. Is the North Pole really in Finland and does Santa Claus live there? North Pole is uh, a few, I'd say probably close to a thousand kilo, kilometers up from Finland. It's, it's quite far up. Really? And uh, Santa Claus... Santa Claus is a figure, a marketing campaign created by Coca-Cola. Uh, <laughs> this is sold to kids, so the kids will like Coca-Cola, drink sugar, and the Coke brothers can make some some money. Well, I just use it to like control my daughter a little bit. Like, they'll be good, be good, or you get nothing from Santa. I gotta run that you until know, she realizes that it isn't real. You should you should tell your daughter about the Finnish Santa Claus because the Finnish the sort of uh ancient santa claus how it's been told in like uh, the finnish like stories right is it was a very sort of ugly character and uh, he would often bring kids uh like uh like i don't know what you call like ashes and then cool. if the kids had been naughty he would eat cool. their heads what he would eat their heads yes that's the sort of the sort of actual history of like the finnish santa claus why are you, you you guys are voted like you just said you're like the most happiest people in the world you got stories about people eating kids heads yeah that's what? like the old shit you know like yeah the santa claus isn't real and that's just a marketing campaign by coca-cola so yeah but the the no actually the lap lapland sort of province they take advantage of of it and they take money out of tourists and have this Santa Claus thing. So there is actual Santa Claus in Rovaniemi if you want to go there, but that's just to get money off of tourists. Okay. Well, you learn something new every day. <laughs> All right. Phil Fernandez, Hot Rod local racer here. Uh, we I love Tuesday night nationals at Hot Rod. Uh, what's the first thing you adjust when your rear end just wants to wash out during a 180 to 180 degree turn on a loose dirt track at night you guys rock by the way uh i think that's anti anti uh rito is something you want to change you want more uh what yeah, else would you more rear suggest toe, probably you could try like standing up the shocks a bit if it's slow speed corners you could try maybe a bit softer springs uh you could try uh softer Off the sway bar. as well yeah sway bar too i think or oh, if it's higher speed that you're having this issue you could try lowering the rear arm no it sounds uh, like it's because... one low speed 180s so you probably yeah, need so some then, more rear toe yeah so rear toe standing shocks up softer springs uh thinner center diff so stuff like that probably would help and good luck at hot rod man that's an awesome place to race Small track, but super, super fun. Matthew J. Forget, another SoCal uh, native. Max, do you prefer to race with all four tires, the same tread and compound, or do you often use maybe one tread design different, uh, like different from front to rear? And would you ever use a different compound on the front versus rear? And if so, and, and if so, when do you find that you use such, such unmatched tire compound combos? J concepts uh triple D's front reflex rear. That's the that's yeah. like I'm telling you, that's that's perfect. Uh then CD beam, I know people have used that combo. 
Yeah. Never really liked it myself. I mean, I don't, I usually, if it's like, I just go like uh, I beam, like, or bow tie or whatever the brand is. But yeah, I, I've never really been a huge fan of C beams. Bow Some fighters. people really like them. Prime fighters and <laughs> yeah. bow ties. That's why I think kind of started it. Yeah. Um, but for sure, uh, Triple D's front and uh, Reflex Rear from J Concept. That was one of my favorite combos. Same I ran it at every time. Compound? Yeah. The compound thing is generally. Generally, you choose a compound that has the most grip, that not that it the wear is wear is right, because the thing is, if you have a too soft compound, it might have very good grip to start out with, but as mm. soon as it heats up, it, the grip will you will lose the grip. So generally, uh, some people have a weird misconception that always going for the softer compound will have more grip. Sometimes when the tire just starts overheating, you need a uh, a stiffer compound so that uh, you actually have the grip. So okay. always pick the compound due to the temperature, the sort of abrasiveness of the track. And yeah, so it always, I think, same compound both ends. How, when would you use that uh, that JC combo that you like so much? I used it at every, every time you would use uh, triple D's, I used that way. So every, every time you use either reflex triple D's, I did use that because uh, that way you have a lot of steering and the rear end doesn't have any any weird extra stuff to it. It's just calm. Uh, you have very balanced grip uh, in the, on the rear. And uh, yeah, so every time you think of running reflex or triple E's, just go with that, I think. That was my Thank sort of consensus, at least. Thank you, Matthew, for the question, dude. See you at DNC. Uh, Will Cunningham, why do tire companies not sell tires in sets of four? Well, Lugs do. Lugs is uh, actually, let me through Lugs. Is a sponsor of this podcast we have a um coupon code yeah. for that as well so they sell in sets I, of four uh yeah some do uh i don't really know i think one for sure might be like just money like it's, it's you get more money out of it that way i think uh because you can you can have more markup i think i would imagine uh other things I don't like for for the customer. I don't see any benefit in that because generally you don't just buy one set of tires. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you when you go to a race, you buy at least a few sets. So, if you were looking to drive, like I said, like a uh, city beams or uh, triple H front reflex rear, you would just buy two a set of each and then right, just right, combine right, right. them. So it's it's not like that's not a good enough reason. So I think it's just that with separate sort of tires, you get better markup. Yeah. All right. Uh, a couple of Instagram questions here uh, for Max. Which is the least favorite maintenance task? Diff fluid swap or shock fluid swap? Diff fluid I, all the day, every I, day. I got to be honest here. I, for the past few years, I'd say like, like since like 20... 2019 2020 i've been sort of testing like switching your shock foots often and then just not switching them at all mm -hmm. and i i personally i haven't found much difference it there's a lot Places, of air which one them. did you do which one did you dislike the most which one do no you no i yeah 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 i i dislike diffs the most but yeah the thing because is they like, take so much longer and it's stinky yeah and it's messy but the shocks i actually don't do very often i don't i think we change our shock like, oil too much man yeah, I think so too. The diff fluid is much more important than shock fluid. Yeah. Like I I could easily go through a race weekend with the same shock fluid. Uh like there are situations where you have to change it, but mm -hmm. if it's not very dusty, if it's uh if it's but you like don't that, think the oil breaks down from the heat at all in shocks? I don't think so. Uh depends on like it, it some shocks for sure. But mm -hmm. the shocks I be running, I like I haven't noticed anything like because I have tested it so many times and I just don't don't notice a major difference. But try making a fresh set of diffs and that's a huge difference. So yeah, so diff I definitely don't like it. Shocks I don't really change, so I don't really complain. My good buddy Jason Roberts, who in the RC industry would you like to punch in the face? That's pretty easy for me. 
I don't really have anyone. Like, I, like if someone doesn't like me, I just don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, I don't really like. If, if like, I know there are, must be some people who dislike me. Like, very, very. Oh, I'm hard. sure there's many people that dislike you. Oh, Eric. Yeah, you know. but for me, like, if you if you hate me, like. I'm happy to tell you I don't really give a shit. I don't probably know who you and are. So, <laughs> so. Uh, the one person I definitely would like to punch in the mouth in the mouth is JQ, especially when he's trying to find something like when he won't drop a topic. Like it's funny the first time, and then he'll just continue on for like five minutes. And I just feel like saying, like, oh, what was it on the last podcast? Um, oh, results. I can't find results. I can't find results. And that took like seven minutes of his spiel when he starts the only problem with that is like punching jq is like useless because he would be like oh yeah see my face he, he would be like he was he's just the type of guy who'd be like joseph he, like, is like jesus he just turns the other cheek <laughs> yeah and then he'd be like my face my face messed up your fist like you know what i mean i won that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at you your your finger's broken my face did that yeah well your face is broken no, we don't punch people in the face. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right, Max, I don't, uh, like, you got some Discord have... questions. Let's let's take a few Discord questions and then um, we'll wrap this up because we we've, we've been going for about yeah. an hour on this. So let me let me get them up. So, okay, I think we answered this in the past, but so also asked... quick ev quickly, everybody, just real quick to plug our our Discord. Uh, oh yeah, uh, check it out. We're at a hundred and. 359 members and growing uh we would love to have you in the discord so come in be uh there's always a link in the written description of this podcast and um yeah join the conversations in the i have right now i have to answer uh a very important question in the discord and lefty simple thoughts and that is if i was a professional wrestler what would my name be so i have to really yeah. really Think about this because this might stick with me forever. So yeah, uh, you haven't thought of it yet. Well, the flying hammer. So yeah, no, no, no. It's not okay, so let me answer this one then. So with cars being released every year with marginal changes, how much lower would an average driver be with a kit from say five years ago to now, or even ten years ago with respect to the latest model? Uh, a yearly kit release is completely un uh, uh, unnecessary um and is it is it just an unnecessary cost personally i still believe very strongly that if you would give any of the sort of fast guys a properly set up mp9 they could right. probably win the worlds with that even really? today really? yeah quality wise I, though too it was still in good quality back then mp9 isn't that long ago it's maybe yeah like but it's like mp9 like 10 mm -hmm. years ago dude yeah, MP9 but it's still, good, it's still a good car. Ago. Yeah, that's the thing. I, like, I think you could a low C eight, like a regular low C eight, could be competitive right now in 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 this time. Yeah, but that's not like I think. I think the MP nine MP nine was so ahead of its time uh, okay. then. So that that's a very specific one. But I'd say like yeah, uh, like Mugen right now. Oh, they went back to MPX six. Yeah, like the so MPX six and MPX eight doesn't yeah. really have a lot of difference in them uh so i think durability is the biggest difference in in the cars in the past like 15 years in the past 10 it doesn't change much but past like 10 to 15 that's where a lot of changes happened uh yeah i i mean i'm a strong believer in the mp9 i mean dude like hp has like 10 year old uh, gearboxes still like i think hara won with the same gearboxes they still sell on the car not not confirmed that really one, so it's crazy old like it's well it's funny old. you should ask that question because uh uh i talked to uh hagberg about that on this week's interview because he did the the t1 yeah, he did versus a good video the x4 that. and he was he was like i was just surprised at how close it was you know so uh i think the biggest i think we'd have to go back to like a kit like like a, a MP MP seven or something like that. Or Mugen am I MDX able to 5. share my screen? Uh, you should be able to. Do you have let the share button open, on here? Yeah, let me open a few pictures of the. Please have uh, your porn stash like yeah, up, I'll, up I'll, on there. Please. I'll hide the porn. You know. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I was joking. 
Uh, so <laughs> no, I wish too, but I accidentally fucked up the photo. Okay, yeah, so, so here we um, are. I'll try. I'll, I'll try the share screen. Uh, so you think like so, an MP9 could be competitive? Do you think anything older than that could be, do good? Like, oh, the previous just, like the like the Kyosho is could do it very well. I, I think the, I think the low C eight I... could do it. I think the low C eight. Okay, no problem. Is that what you How want to share, Ross? Now you need to no. go to okay. whatever this you want one. to share. So this is like the front end here. Like this plate is mm. pretty much the same as it was. Same thing with like the gearboxes. The radio tray has developed a slight bit. I think the, I think the Ackerman plate is still the same. So this is, this is his, eight, his world's winning race. Yeah, 2008. Oh, yeah, 2008. 2008. Wow, so, look at <laughs> that's a long time ago, dude. Yeah, that's ten years ago now. No, I don't know. My math's off. Fourteen years, dude. Fourteen years. Yeah, I, I said we're thirteen was... and some something over, but yeah. Wow, crazy. All right. Um, I think what's the next question there in Discord? I don't have them up here. Oh yeah, sorry. We'll take We're a very disorganized more. at the end of this. Um, oh, the sponsorship question. So, one guy asked, "What pointers would you give someone looking to get their first sponsors?" And uh, someone asked, "Like, do you need like if you have a chassis sponsor, or if you have sponsors, can you run Sportsman if it's not a chassis sponsor?" Uh, and then. There was one other guy who asked about sponsors. Okay, I'll get on my but, soapbox yeah. real quick for this. Uh, sponsorship. Remember, it's a two-way street. You give, they give. So be useful. Believe in the company that you want to be sponsored by. You know what I mean? Don't just go to a company because they're going to give you a good deal. Like If you like HB and you want to be a part of them, Go be a part of them. If they don't give you a deal and you still like your HP, go drive them. Go drive it. Also, uh, be sure this is what you really want. Why do you want to get sponsored? You know what I mean? Is It's not really that much of a savings at, at the end of the day sometimes. Are you going to put more pressure on yourself as a sponsor driver? Because then you're going to put yourself, uh, you're going to take your, ser your racing a lot more seriously. Are you being, a, are, you, are, you do, are you just doing the sponsorship thing because it's cool? You think it's cool and you want to fit in? So ask, ask all these questions of yourself. Or do you like the fact that you can run any car that you want? Now, if, you, if you're like, hey, this is the car, the company that I like, I want to be a part of them. I think I can see, the, see, me, see myself with them for a few years or longer, then go for it. But if you think like, I'm going to jump around and skip to all these other different chassis and to, to find something that I like, then I think you should just not be a sponsor driver, be a privateer, and do that. Also, um, with chassis sponsors going in, like I know DNC, the rule apparently is sportsman, no chassis sponsor. You can have sponsors elsewhere, like tire sponsors, etc. And I believe it's like you can be in the open class. You, you can't be like 100% racer or something like that. But let's be honest. We've talked about this before. Sponsorship does not dictate uh, skill level in RC. So, you know, it's you can have a heavily sponsored driver who's not very good. You know what I mean? He's a good ambassador. And um, yeah, just be thoughtful about your sponsorship thing. Uh, be Just believe in the company that you want to uh, support. Would you support, why are you supporting this company without a sponsorship, you know, as well? So look at all that type of stuff and um, go from there because I see too many people just going for the bigger deal and not being happy or or not even really knowing any, like I can't count the amount of times people have messaged me about JQ racing. And they're like, I like, do you know anything about JQ racing? And then they give me a generic answer and I'm like, yeah, you know nothing about this. So I don't know where Max went. Hold on for a second. So what's the next question on discord, Max? Let's take a couple more and then we'll close it up for the day. You'll answer so those I'll on ask, discord. So I'll ask myself the fish tailing question because this was asked a few times already. I think, I don't know if I gave a good answer. Uh, so to stop fish tailing on power uh, or sort of the exit part of the corner uh, on slow speed, 
uh, stand the shocks up. Uh, go to uh, a softer rear spring. Um, sometimes just one of those chasing will help you. If it's before you go on throttle, then those two most likely are the main issue. You can also try lowering the the link on the tower if it's if it again is slow speed uh if it's high speed fish tailing then might be actually easier they it might help you to go up on the tower but it really depends where you're start, starting from on the on the link on the tower but uh generally the fish tailing is because of uh the rear end sort of overloading and then releasing or sometimes it just because the rear end just doesn't get grab grip at all so towing could sometimes help you as well so adding rear towing uh, but there's a lot of things that could cause it uh sometimes anti-squat can help with adding more anti-squat so there's a lot of things you can think of but if it's slow speed uh try standing up your shocks try going to get a thinner spring or a softer spring sweet sweet i think that's enough we've we've had a, quite a few questions here yeah, we got, we had I think we're getting to the point where we have to kind of pick which questions we're going to ask and whatnot. But keep them coming, yeah. guys. Uh, what we don't answer on this week's show, we'll try to answer next week, or we'll try to answer in Discord. Uh, do you see anyone you want to answer in particular before we go on? I know my buddy Axel Owen had one. Let's see what what was his. He asked this yeah. last week, I think. One guy, one guy asked about Serpent. Uh, but do they sponsor drivers? Are they doing anything in RC? I don't think they really are because they, they are though. Really, they are I know guys that are sponsored by Serpent. Oh, okay. In USA and in in UK, okay. they're uh, in the UK. They're obviously. But I don't think they're. Them. I don't think they have any pro stuff left because they used to have pro drivers on on road. But well, I, I don't think, think any of those Easton. guys. Are. Yeah, I think Billy Easton is like the only sort of pro guy they have at the moment because I don't think they have anyone left in on road. Like uh, uh, Greiner, I think he's out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't, I can't remember any guy who was, who's the serpent driver who's still, uh, like who's still a serpent driver. I know one drivers, dedicated so. serpent guy, my buddy Donny B, he's down in North Carolina, Virginia area. He loves serpent for life. He listens, big listener of the podcast as well. But they, serpent's still around. They just, I think once Paul Sicarello kind of left, that's when it just went, like, yeah, yeah, it just went downhill. But I think it's weird because it it, it has also died a bit in Europe, so it's not, not just in America. Okay, in yeah, UK, but, yeah, because Tony well, Advoca has it, he does a pretty good. But in the UK, everything is alive. Like the, any every brand that exists is probably alive in the UK. Lots of ten scale racing, see. Yeah, lots of ten scale racing there. Yeah, good stuff. All right, I think that's it, Max. Um, thank you, everybody, for the questions. Uh, we enjoyed them. I mean, it's it's getting to the point where we have to have a whole podcast for them now. That's cool. Keep them coming. We're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna have some live questions, or I think we're gonna do a live next week. We'll see how it goes. Maybe not Max, but me and Tebow. He uh, he said he's ready to do a live. Um, I think we're gonna go on now, Max, to the uh main interview brought to you by techno rc remember everybody that the bench racing the beach racing bench racing question segment was brought to you by beach rc we have an affiliate link in the, the written description of that podcast you guys can use that we got a little slice and we greatly appreciate it max i'm gonna go on to the interview with the doctor and then i'll see you back for the conclusion all right buddy yeah man techno rc techno rc Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC, excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. So I was supposed to have another guest on today, today this week, and he kind of had to pull out because he was he was going to practice. And um, I remember seeing this ad the other day. I'm actually going to pull it up here. And I was like, wow, 
X-Ray is sending a squad to the Snowbird. Snowbirds. Now, for some reason, I'm thinking this race is later on in the year. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Alex on today, uh, the doctor, to talk about his. He's been racing a lot in the world. And I said, like, oh, well, he's it's the, like, maybe he knows something about the Snowbirds. Maybe he does, you know? And then it's like, I'm actually practicing and getting ready for the Snowbirds. So welcome to a good friend of mine. We've become good friends since he's been on here. And um, I think he's a big supporter of the podcast. And I like what he's done. Uh, and I'd like to welcome Alex. Alexander, the Dr. Hagberg. What's up, dude? How are you? What's going on, man? I'm How are doing you? well. I'm good. Hey, I'm good. I'm, thank you uh, for uh, the short timing. Uh, you was like, yeah, sure. I'd come on today. I appreciate that. Where are you actually right now? So I'm in St. Louis, Missouri okay. at uh, a track called Pro Level RC. Mm -hmm. So it's a permanent indoor carpet track where um, it works really well for us to test and prepare for this big event that's coming up next week. So our whole team will come here to practice together and also do some car development uh, at the same time. And yeah, it works out really well. Yeah. Um, so if you guys don't know who Alexander is, he I had him on the podcast maybe over a year ago. He's a two-time world champion in a touring car. And uh, okay, what was it two time in touring car and what else was it? Yeah, so 10 scale touring car and nitro touring car mm -hmm. um, and 12 scale. Yes, but unfortunately, he doesn't run nitro anymore, people. He doesn't believe in the glory, but that's fine. Um, but he's he's still one of the most uh, recognizable pro professionals. He's He's got constant videos. His content that he puts out on YouTube is, is, is exceptional. He is um, really a big voice for on road. Uh, the onward genre of rc and uh he's been a long time x-ray driver as well he's actually won this race a few times that we're talking about here the snowbird so let's talk a little bit about that uh alex this this race was uh the first race was in 1995 it's always been in florida so this is the 27th year of running this race when was the first time that you attended this race yeah so i first attended the snowbirds in 2012 so that was um already 10 years ago so since then, I've only missed it two or three times. I've been there quite a few times already. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's a, it's a very big on-road event, but it actually started as an oval event. So they only did oval racing. Mm. But then they brought into on-road, road course classes at some point to bring up the entry count. So now we actually share the same track, oval and on-road, and they rebuild the track uh, between classes. So we race on road in the morning and they switch to oval racing in the afternoon and the evening. So okay. it's actually a pretty unique race in that sense that we're racing both oval and on road. Yeah, I, I didn't realize, uh, I actually was talking to a gentleman today, Steve Downs. I was get I'm looking to get some decals done. He's like, yeah, I need to get these done today. Cause I'm headed to the, to the snowbirds. And it's like, yeah, I used to race oval. It's so much, it's so amazing how many off-road guys that I know have done this race before and have crossed over and used to, and, and started doing uh carpet oval. So this race is actually really big. I would, I would say it's kind of like our DNC kind of, I would say for you guys. Yeah. So it's, it's one of the biggest on-road events in the U S each year. Um, the entry count is normally really big because of mm -hmm. all the classes. So it can be up to 400, even 500. I think it's been a few years. Uh, right now, they're, they're, they've got around 200 uh, bodies signed up, mm -hmm. 200 people. So obviously, in the end, it's going to be uh, around 400 entries, I would say. Okay. Uh, so this is held now in a ballroom of a hotel in Kissimmee, Florida, right? It's, it started at a actual, I think, a racetrack or something before when it first started. And then it moved over to this after six years. So it's been in the same place for, for since then. I think they've been in the same hotel now for 12, 12 to 15 years, probably. Okay. It's actually a, a pretty decent place. It's a nice hotel, um, nice rooms, and it's a nice facility. I mean, it's a nice place to come for holiday if you want to bring mm. your family. So it actually works out pretty well for for families that they want to come together and, and race at the race. same time. Like yeah. Silver State. Like Silver State for us, too, if being in a hotel. So, uh, okay. So I have to ask, do they... Uh, they put on obviously you guys bring in the carpet and all that type of stuff and put it on you don't use the carpet that the uh that is in the ballroom correct no so they build a subfloor uh, under the carpet and then um they roll out the carpet so n brand new carpet every year okay but yeah the the subfloor is pretty important to keep the track super smooth and mm. um 
it's a lot of work to build everything, but it usually is, is very, very well made, very, very good track. Who are the people that actually put on this race? So the the guy that puts on the race, his name is Mike Boylan, mm. uh, a, a Florida resident, which he's put on this race since the start, I believe. And he's got a crew with him that helps out, usually the same crew every year. And yeah, they've, they've been going for many years now. So it's obviously a very successful race. Yeah, and I believe they race 24-7 as well. It's not quite 24-7 anymore. It's around 20 hours around the clock that they race. So we start 5 a.m. with on-road. We finish around 2 or 3 p.m. Then they start with oval, and oval usually finish at around 2 in the morning. So it's it's almost 24 hours, but not quite. Okay, all right. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, so when does this, how long is this race? So when does it start? Uh, what day does it start? And uh, uh, when does it finish? Well, obviously it finishes on a Sunday, but you know. Yeah, so we fly out on Monday. Practice starts Tuesday morning. We have two days of practice and then two days of qualifying, actually three days of qualifying, and then we go into finals on the Sunday. Okay, sweet. So this, like, so let's talk about this because we were talking about this before you came on. Uh, X-Ray has sent a serious squad to this race. There you are on right there. There's Martin Hootie right in the, on the side and Coelho. And then I don't know any of these guys, sorry. <laughs> well, these guys, but they look fast. I like this. Uh, I like when X-Ray does this type of stuff. I wish more companies would do this. They get the idea of branding and promotion. I saw that they did yeah. this for the Florida Carpet Championships. And um, just, I was just going through their Facebook today and I was like, wow, we, more teams need to do stuff like this. So, so tell us about this squad that's going there, man. This is, this is quite an impressive looking team, it, it looks like. Yeah, sure. So you're probably familiar with the European guys, myself, Bruno, uh, Martin mm. Hudi, obviously is the, the team manager. And Jan Roteski is the big guy on the left of me. And okay. um, he's uh, our top stock racer in Europe. And a French guy named Alex Duchette, which is um, also very fast in the stock class. We got Drew Ellis, our uh, US team manager. And Kevin on all the way to the left with the cap on. Okay. And then we got Robbie Dodge and Max Kuning all the way to the right, which they are some of the top US guys for our team. Sweet. Um, this is this is a squad. So all of these guys will be racing, even Martin, correct? Martin, yeah, he will be racing as well, Touring Car Modified. Okay, and this is the first time that Coelho has been to this race? It's his first time, yep. Oh, wow. And this is your race, though. Like, you've won this race a lot of times. You won it the last time you he was here in 2020. Yeah, so I, I, I really like this race. I always had a good time, and I had really good results there. So I'm going to try and keep that up for this year as well. All right. How about uh, are we seeing any of your f fellow European onward counterparts coming over, maybe from Automatics, uh, Serpent? Will we see any other European Euro drivers or who will be the top drivers representing those teams? No. So as far as I know, uh, the other teams are not sending anyone from Europe. They've decided wow. to focus on other events in Europe. And uh, X-Ray is the only team that's sending the European team over. I, there was there was rumors that Infinity would send some of their top guys to the race, mm -hmm. so they haven't signed up yet, but it's possible that they will show up. That'd be good. I'd like to see that. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Who would come from Infinity, do you think? So there were rumors that uh, Victor Wilk and uh, Nayoto uh, Matsukura would show up. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, well, actually, um, we're debating if who's Infinity going to send for the RCGP team, and we're hoping that they send out as well for the first race yeah i mean for them it's not a question of having the money so it's more about if if they want to send somebody right yes so, so i hope that they can support the race and and send as many guys as possible all right who are some of the top american talent that we have to look for or look out for in this race yeah so the top guy from the us right now is his name is sam isaacs he's okay. from uh, maryland and uh, he's really fast in modified classes um, a couple other guys, Camp, Ander Camp Anderson from Tennessee, and um, Craig Xavier, and a few other guys that are really specialized in the stock classes, mm -hmm. which they will be forces to be reckoned with. And it's going to be a really competitive race. And obviously, 
thanks to the the Europeans bringing up the, the status of the race. Yeah, yeah, I love. I just. I, I love when the Euros, Euros and international crowd and the Americans get racing together. We need to see it more uh, on, on all genres. So uh, kudos to X-Ray for sending such a squad. And But actually, X-Ray has been super busy. You know, you've been busy. Uh, you you know, when I got to know you, it was kind of COVID. So you wasn't traveling anywhere. And, um, you know, we actually, actually, I forgot. We're actually connected because we're both Star Wars fanatics. And... <laughs> Have you, dude? Real quick, Book of Boba episode five. Oh, oh it's gonna be good. It's so good. And I need to catch up on that. I mean, I didn't have time to watch it really because I was sick, and then I was only home for a short amount of time, and haven't had time because I try to watch it together with my wife usually because mm-hmm. we're both Star Wars fans. So I need to catch up on the on the Boba Fett. Oh man, I spoiled it for everybody today. Don't worry. Um, so don't look at my Facebook, but it's awesome. All right. So, you have you you started traveling again i think you did you you came over to america during thanksgiving um so you was probably one of the first europeans that i knew that were, that was a racer that was starting to come over here and you've been kind of busy ever since so tell us about now tra- you've you've traveled quite a bit how's traveling during covid like how much has it changed oh man it's uh it's a bit of a pain actually because of the, the different restrictions and requirements for each country so basically for each trip that i do i need to check what are the local restrictions what do i need to enter the country do i need to be tested um, a certain amount of time before things like that so it's it's rather complicated to be honest i was actually really lucky when i traveled home from the u.s last time because because i need a negative test to travel back and i Mm -hmm. tested negative then i flew home and i tested positive when i came home so I was lucky that I was able to to get mm-hmm. home and then I got sick when I was home. So that was fine. But it's really, it's a bit of a, a, a stressful situation with which each trip now because of all the, the things that's required and that it's so easy to, to catch COVID when you're abroad and you might be stuck in that country for for a few days. So it's, it's really stressful, but it's possible. It works out. I mean, there's races going on, so we need to be present no matter what yeah th- this is for sure i think we have to get to a part where we live with this you know what i mean and just take the yeah. precautions and figure out how to maneuver and do it i know joseph is on his way to america i have really for me it's no big issues traveling from here uh it's pretty you know you need to be obviously vaccinated to get into america and then i have to have a, a negative test and then actually coming back we don't we, we just need to we don't even need anything which is surprising but uh it's good to see. I mean, X-Ray is, and as we was talking before, X-Ray has seemed to like take the bull by the horns. They're sending big teams to on these international trips. You've been busy going around Europe. Uh, Coelho has as well. Uh, is X-Ray just like saying, "Hey, all right, we've been we've been dormant for two years. It's time to come out swinging." And hey, we're still around. Yeah. So when when COVID first struck, actually, we were really cautious about their spendings and uh, they try to save budget for everything. But uh, recently, they've really pushed hard for uh, international events for the the top team guys. And I think it's really important to be to be present and to be out there and keep pushing. I mean, um, you're only as good as your last race, and we need to be we need to show that we're there every time and show our presence. Not necessarily to win every race, but we need to be there. Mm-hmm well that's good i mean it's time i mean we, we we're ready the the people want to see x-ray they want to see all these teams competing and it's so good to see like and um like now we know that like the florida copper championships is always going to have a big european for the offered side the a big european staple coming over just like the dnc and now this race uh so I, i'm glad companies are tired like you know hey we've been home for two years let's go it's time to now do our talking on the track and x-ray is doing i like it that's a big team that is a big team a lot of europeans to send over for this yeah race. it's uh, it's a lot of pit spots it's gonna be a big x-ray uh, pit area this year but it's gonna yes. be fun i'm looking forward to it yes i am too all right so let's talk about the new x4 released uh late 2021 uh, was a lot of hype around this car. How much of it, how much input and how much were you involved in development of this new car? Yeah, so I've been uh, involved in development from day one. So obviously last year when we couldn't race much, we had a lot of time for development. So I spent a lot of time 
testing and giving input on the new car. I mean, it's a um, 90% 90 new platform. Um, if you compare with the T4, which is our previous touring car, so almost mm -hmm. a completely new car. So everything was new on the car almost. Okay. So we, we had to spend a lot of time on development and uh, testing different uh, components. And it was very time consuming, but in the end, uh, the result was very satisfying. And uh, it's been a really good project so far, which I'm proud to be a part of. Yeah. So how does testing something like this happen with COVID? How did that work? Yeah, so we were able to travel to Slovakia a couple times last winter um, for private testing at the Hudi Arena. So even though they were not allowed to put on events because of the restrictions, we were mm -hmm. allowed to have private test sessions uh, behind closed doors. So myself, Bruno, Martin, and uh, sometimes other factory guys too. But we were able to do it privately. We didn't have any events, but we were able to test still, which was uh, very useful for the development process. Yeah. Uh, so anything in particular that you're really proud of that you might have had a lot of input or influence in that's on this car that's different from any other car? Yeah. So the X4 features the CFF, the carbon uh, fiber fusion, which is carbon fiber uh, basically joined together with, with a composite plastic. So that's something unique, which no, nobody else has until now. And mm -hmm. um, it was very time consuming consuming to develop and to test different combinations of materials and we pulled it off and we we're very happy with the results so i'm um, very proud of that component of the car and um, as i said i think x-ray might be the only brand that's really able to pull something like that off because of their in-house uh, production that they have in europe what does that allow to do like so i don't you're gonna explain what that actually allows the car to do or what what's what's that what's the capabilities of that like put it yeah, in an so, example for me. So when you have uh, two parts of the suspension arms, it's, it's carbon mm -hmm. fiber and composite, you have more options to play with in terms of mm -hmm. flex and stiffness. Okay. So you can you can use a different type of carbon or a different type of plastic. Basically, you have much more combinations and flex options, which flex is everything in an RC car. It's the most uh, important part of the setup, almost, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So it just, just gave us more uh, opportunities to change the setup and to fine tune it for different conditions. Also, I, you know, that's, that is cool. Like, and you are correct. Flex is important, especially in on-road. And, um, I remember back in the day in off-road, we used to like try to take all flex out of cars and that was just so silly. Now it's like, we need, we use it, you know, to generate uh, grip and whatnot. Impressive stuff. All right. Uh, so while you was also during off during COVID, you made an interesting video where you took this new car and tested it against uh, 20, was it 20 years ago, Tw the T1? Yeah, it's 20 years old, the T1, T1 Evo 2, yeah. So how did this come about? Um, and how long, how did you go about doing this? Was this all done in Portugal? Yeah, so I did that test at home. It was actually an idea which I started discussing with one of the locals at the track in Lisbon where I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came up to me, he's like, uh, I've got a, an old T1 still in the box. Why don't you borrow it from me? You build it and you, you drive it. And I was like, all right, uh, let's do that. Let's compare it to the X4, the, the current car, mm -hmm. just for fun. Not was not really a 100% scientific comparison. Right, right. Uh, to be honest, it was mainly done for fun, just to see how a really old car would work against a brand new one. And if the development done over the years really has a significant uh, impact on the lap times. And in the end, yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised that the difference was so little in lap time and that the old car was actually surprisingly fast. So uh, I think it was a really fun thing to do. And um, it showed that a lot of a lot of things have changed over the years, but in the end, it's just, it is a small improvement on the, on the clock. So yeah. It was, what was the most noticeable thing that you noticed between the cars? Like immediately. Yeah, the biggest difference is the center of gravity is much higher on the old mm -hmm. car. So you can really tell that it rolls around more. It, it takes longer to transfer the weight from left to right. So just a lot less reactive than the current car. And okay. uh, in a high grip situation, it will definitely have problems with traction rolling and uh, it will scrub a lot more speed in the corners. So that was the, the biggest difference, the center yeah. of gravity. You ran it outdoors, correct? Yeah, so I ran it outdoors okay. on a, on a pretty big track with low traction. Okay. And it had modern day electronics in it. 
How about build wise? Was it uh, back in the day, Dremelin and stuff, or was it more, more like it is now more of a polished fit and finish? No, so X-Ray has been known for their their build quality throughout the years. That has been really good, like out mm. of the box, it builds really well. You 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 rarely have to to adjust or modify anything out of the box. And the T1 was was the same. It was it built really well out of the box? Um, it's a lot more difficult to work on the way the car is designed. Like for example, to take the diff out of the car, it takes I don't know. 10, 15 minutes, whereas on the current car, you can do it in, in uh, two minutes. So mm-hmm. it's um, a lot more difficult to work on, I would say. Okay, interesting, interesting. I wish we would see more videos like that. I'd like to see uh, maybe an older eight-scale car versus a modern one nowadays. <clears throat> same electronics, same motors, everything on the same type of track, see how it works. And uh, I think, though, it was a little bit different back then. Like, it was... In the the uh, the abuse and the probably that the cars were taken back then was equal to what they take now, but quality is a lot better. I think that's where it was struggle mostly for for eight scale. So I would love to see stuff like that, and um, I'm glad you did it. And it it's it had some interesting, and uh, I think people were just surprised, like they thought it was going to be a blow, like a you know the car was going to be so much better, but it was very close in the end. So cool yeah. stuff. I hope we see more stuff like that from you guys. All right. So, uh, our, my friend, my favorite eight scale driver and your country, your counterpart from your country, fellow Swede, uh, David Ronnefalk. He's, uh, he's got, he's got the 10 scale worlds on his brain this year as well. He's going to do the eight scale worlds and offer it. And then I think a week later is 10 scale worlds. You've had a chance to actually race with him. Uh, what do you think about, uh, your fellow Swedes? Uh, abilities can run a folk do some damage in the 10 scale world eventually or even this year yeah definitely i mean he's a super talented driver and when he puts time in uh, he's fast as we've seen several times already he's done well in on road he's been in the ets a final a couple times already so he's really competitive and when he puts the time in you can really tell that he's he's gonna be uh, really fast and uh, i raced him a couple times already and he's got some good equipment with the automatics car and yeah that's it i mean not not surprising at all for me is it more like a setup thing here as well learning that having the perfect setup for these type of car i know this is a much the setup has to be extremely perfect for on road is that something that he's learning or something that he could do to make it better or is it something that he has to do driving wise Sure. I mean, I think the easiest thing for him to adapt to is the driving, because when you have that much talent, it's it's quite quick that you can adapt to driving the touring car. But to work on the car, probably you will need some time to to learn how everything works and what stuff you need to pay attention to, because it is quite different to, to off road. It's it's a lot more important to pay attention to small details and um, like small fine mm-hmm. adjustments are more important than in off road. I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think he once he gets back from DNC, he's on his way out there as well this week. Uh, he's going to put some focus on his track. Have you have you driven at his track up there in Sweden? So I've never been there, actually. I was supposed mm-hmm. to go there in January for the Swedish Nationals, but the event actually got canceled. So I'm okay. um, hoping to come there at the end of this year for the Swedish Nationals, which will be held at his track. Awesome, awesome. He seems to be enjoying it, and um, I guess... I mean, obviously, offer is his bread and butter, but it's great to see these drivers. You know, obviously, Coelho is another crossover driver as well. Amazing talent. He comes from it's so he comes from the opposite side uh, on road to off road. It's it's good to see. I wish more we would see more of this. I wish these off road guys would come over and cross over, but they have such a busy schedule as well. I know it's very difficult to do that. Yeah. So, What's next for you after the snowbirds? Uh, I'm, I assume you're busy. I think you're going to, no, you was already in England at some point or you're back over there or what did I read that wrong? No, I couldn't go to the UK cause, cause of COVID cause I had okay. COVID that week. So I had to stay at home. So I'm supposed okay. to go to the UK in March for their last round of the EWS series. Mm-hmm. And before that I have a race in France at the end of February, which is, is another international event. So. The next couple of months actually are uh, pretty busy with a lot of traveling. Yeah, it's it's busy on the off-road side. Uh, are you coming back to America anytime this year? 
So I have a trip planned in April mm -hmm. to go to Denver for a race called uh, Mile High Indoor Champs in, in, in April. Okay. So that's, that's my next trip to the U.S. All right. All right. Well, let's talk about the Worlds. So the Worlds are in when? Uh, what, what time? September this year? Yeah. So September, September 11 till 19, I think, uh, in Gubbio, Italy. Okay. First so, 10 scale Worlds in how many years now? So last 10 scale touring car Worlds we had was, um, let me think, 2018. Really? Who won that? Uh, Bruno. Okay, so Bruno is going to be there. This is going to be the who's who of of ten scale racing, automatic serpent. You guys, Schumacher. Uh, what? Who? Who? Who are we going to be looking out for at this race? Like, who are the fast guys going in here, <laughs> including yourself? But who do you? Who do we have to watch out for? I mean, for the touring car roles, it's basically the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. um, so Bruno, probably the favorite going into the race. Uh, Ronald Welker from Germany, who's driving from Eugen. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Reiner for Automatics. Um, myself for X Ray. And a couple of other strong uh, European names, which will fight for the win. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good to see a world championship again after after almost four years. So, yeah. looking forward to that. Is, so, is this just 10 scale then? Just 10 scale touring car. I think they're going to do uh, Formula One, so F1 as well. Mm -hmm. But just 10 scale. A 12 scale is, um, there's no race on schedule as of now, but there's a 12 scale world coming up at some point as well. Okay. Well, I'm just glad that we're getting back to having worlds. Euros this year as well? 10 scale Euros, where would that be? Yeah, that will be at Hoodie Arena in June. So okay. at our home track. Uh, the first Euros since 2019. So another event to look forward to yes yes hopefully we'll have some good coverage of that I, I think rc racing tv will be doing all the afro events this year so that will be great I, I look forward to seeing that the hoodie facility is absolutely beautiful man hey it must be great to be like hey they have the baddest ass facility in rc i'm sorry like yeah i mean i'm i'm biased of course but i would say it's it's one of the best in the world uh the most modern with the best facilities around it so it's definitely worth a visit like it's it's an amazing facility yeah i've just uh the videos you sent me and just seen like their banquet and everything that they had um uh, <clears throat> i know x-ray gets a, a a lot of a lot of bad they get some bad you know people get some bad opinions about them but i think they're 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 actually a very good force in rc they're doing things look at them they they're sending their racers which i wish more companies would pay attention and see the value of sending people internationally to do these type of things and um uh it's good to see man like i'm happy that you're racing again uh it's good to see coelho as well coming to america and doing more racing i definitely think people can see that i hope he can come to some eight scale racing I, I guess we'll see him at the eight scale worlds as well this year in um in spain uh i'm happy for you because i know this is what you like to do as much as you like to make content and all that stuff you're still a racer at heart so this is good to see you getting back to racing so uh, how old are you now you're getting up in age now you got a son now yeah Family. I'm, I'm 32 years old 32 um, okay that's old yeah. for rc guy so i've been racing already for 20 years mm -hmm. more than 20 years and professionally already for 11 years so okay. uh yeah time flies when you're having fun i guess yeah are we kind of thinking of the future now um maybe racing is you know like i have a few more years of good racing left in me it's time to get back and and take over a, a bigger role in the x-ray uh company yeah absolutely i mean i want to race professionally as long as i can mm -hmm. but obviously i have to be realistic and say that it cannot last forever so at one point i have to to start doing a different kind of tasks for for my job and hopefully i can work with with X-Ray, my longtime sponsor, to do something apart from just racing full time. Yeah, I think uh, you would be the obvious choice for that. You're very mature, uh, very smart. You've been around this for a very long time. You stuck with them. I would, uh, I, I would say that they're grooming you for that position at some point. Uh, so I thank you for your time, man. Good luck. Uh, so, would you be? You guys will be racing this weekend at all? Or just practice here at this track. Yeah, so we have a club race here on Saturday. So mm -hmm. we're going to be practicing until then and club racing Saturday. Uh, 
last is this day of practice. That's in the mall. Yeah, so this is actually located yeah. in a mall in um, in Chesterfield outside St. Louis, Missouri. So mm. it's a mall. There's a lot of people that walk in here into the into the track and they're curious about what we're doing here. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's good exposure. Great exposure. Well, good luck to that track. I hope they get. I hope you guys have fun this weekend. Um, good luck to the team, X-ray team. At uh, we, I'm sure they'll have coverage somewhere. So I'll post that up on the NNRC page. Yeah, good you luck can to watch, you. you. You can watch it live on uh, Live RC. I think. Okay, sweet. And good luck to you, man. Um, I know Thanks, this man. is your race, but Coela is super fast right now, and it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to beat her. But hey, man, I would say experience. Get the experience, and you've been here a lot. Thank you for Thanks. your time, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I enjoy your time there. Hope you get back home to be with your family and watch some Book of Boba because it's really good. And um, you're going to be surprised after episode five. All right, dude. Thank you. Uh, have a good one. Thanks, man. Speak soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, so Max, that ends our second podcast of the week. Thank you for your time, good buddy. I know you've been busy with school, but uh, we, we greatly appreciate your time. The people like you. You know, they like this new positive Max that we have. So that's good to see. Uh, I'm glad to see it. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, I sent you a few messages of the people that are really enjoying what we're doing. So to keep you encouraged, I think that's it. Did you have anything to add before we uh, close out here, Max? You're muted. You're muted, dude. My mic is up. dying a bit. Oh, you messed <laughs> up. Get just keep your stuff on charge. Oh, it's gone again. It's gone again. Oh, well, you know what? Max is on mute, so he can't be a part of this. So he's just going to have to do sign language while I do this. But uh, thank you to everybody that supports the podcast. We can't do this without you guys. Shout out to the NNRC squad around the world. Remember, everybody, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that notification, that like, that dislike, leave a comment, and uh, hit that sub button. Let's get us up to 2K subs. You know, YouTube is booming. We need to get YouTube booming. Shout out to all of the NNRC squad around the world. I'm sorry, I already said that. See, I'm so I'm I'm not got Max. I'm all lost. I, I'm messing up the I'm max, I'm even messing up the outtakes here. Shut up. I also wanted to say to the NNRC squad that please, uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast app, leave a review, leave a comment, like it. It helps us. Follow us. We greatly appreciate that. Follow us on all our socials as well. Uh, thank you to the patrons of the podcast, the NNRC. We can't do this without you guys. I'm getting more active there. You guys will get a first taste of the blog. Uh, yeah, and I guess, uh, yeah, that's shout out to all the awesome companies that choose to advertise with us. Visible Speak, go check it out. It is the real deal, people. High Tech RC, TNR Fuels, Beach RC, Techno RC, Mayako, Lugs Racing Tires, Clinic RC, check out Clinic RC and his cool oilless filter, Racecraft USA and their command module, G Spec RC tuning for all your. Uh, cabling needs your charge leads needs charge lead needs also a big shout out to Jarrett Tebow shop JTP RC he's got his new engine he'll have it in there he's got servers he's got oils he's got a whole bunch of stuff in there so check him out Papa Willie's traction tonic prepare for victory with Papa Willie's traction tonic pure pure traction we have some coupon codes there shout out to David Ronafalk he's on his way to the to America happy for him RC Kevin had a banging interview with Drake the other day Good luck to the doctor at Snowbirds, Alex Hagberg, and shout out to RCGP. They sold out of uh, their, you know, they got the 100 entries uh, for the race, I believe. So, but signups are still open. So you can still sign up. I'm sure some people will uh, bow out between now and act the actual race. That's great to see. And uh, you know what? Shout out to my boy, Uncle Eddie's. Look. Uh, you know, this is some great seasoning. I've been using it. It's a dry rub. I use it on a lot of stuff. My wife's been using it. Check him out. Ed is a longtime friend of mine. I've known him for a very long time in the RC industry. He's got a good product there. Check him out. And remember, showing those sponsors some love, shows the podcast some love. Check the links in the written description for all of our coupon codes, affiliate links, whatever. So you could save some money there. Helps us out a lot, people. Max, you can't speak to me. So I'm just going to have to do it and say, you know what? Nitro is the glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. If you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Max and the arrogant one. See you later, oh arrogant one that can't talk anymore. And uh, Lefty are out, and we are dropping the short intro outro today.